56 anglers, I think. We better get out there. We got the light on. 5.33. 6 a.m. Let's go. Come on. going on y'all welcome back to the channel we are in the dark Guggen HQ today I'm about to crank some lights on we're gonna grab some rods and baits we are about to hit our third kayak tournament tomorrow morning on Lake Worth in Fort Worth Texas it's gonna be a scorcher 100 degrees probably low winds I got to double check on that so it's gonna be a hot one those fish might be out deep and we're gonna try and come home with the dub on this one and guess what the grand prize has been over $1,000 each time I've seen them host one of these kayak tournaments I'll leave some information below and we're gonna cover a few details about this tournament today since now it's our third one and I've got some information to share but let's get some rods let's run in the store grab some baits and we're gonna be prepped and ready for tomorrow all right there we go we got what we need you can launch from your area at 530 first cast at six lines out at three last submission at 345 and we'll start going over awards and um, all that good stuff probably around 430 under the 820 bridge Look forward to seeing everybody at our last event of the year. All right, just got off the captain's meeting to kind of go over all the tournament rules for tomorrow's event. It is 7.23. I got a little while to rig up. Before it gets dark, we're going to set up a couple of these new casting rods. I got some go-tos, and uh, I was ready to write down my identifier. I think they're going to post that to the group shortly. This is going to be a uh, three either letters or number mixture that you've got to have either visible on the back of your hand when you measure the fish or that you've got to have written down and right there on your catch board so that it is uh, official you caught the fish that morning that identifier is placed out right before the tournament so that there's no uh, cheating issues so never fished there before but we got some new baits check us out All right, y'all, if you want to cut straight to the fishing, I am going to leave a timestamp in the pinned comment or in the description, maybe both. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of the starting lineup for tomorrow and a couple things we've got as backups as well as our mandatory gear, and then we are going to catch you at lines in tomorrow morning. As far as gear goes, we got the life vest, we've got a whistle, we've got our catch board, which I believe is the only board you can use for measuring fish in these tournaments with the North Texas Kayak Group. We've got our marker and paper for our identifier if we don't write it on the back of our hand. I'm just thinking I might wear some sun gloves tomorrow. Then we have got our 360 light. Probably break this thing out and showcase it. It's really cool. I think I got it for like 80 or 90 bucks at Academy. You can also grab this at Carl's. I saw Carl sells it. So we're probably going to grab another one for our second yak. But basically it comes with the whole setup so you can have the light on your kayak. If it, as long as it's got rails on the side for you to attach accessories, then you can grab this from Carl's and you'll be on your way. So it sets up to be about three feet tall or something like that. All you do is you press that button pretty firmly, by the way, and then it turns on. I think you press it again and it gets dim. Bam. And then if you press it a third time, I believe it flashes and I will probably only ever use the bright setting, but we've got our lights, so we're gonna be legal for launching tomorrow at 5.30. All right, here's one of the setups. Black frog for first light, as well as shade pockets and grass. Once the sun starts to pop up, it is the filthy frog. I cut the legs a little shorter. I like to do that to start my walk. And uh, yeah, we just got it on a muscle rod, 50 pound braid. I'm pretty sure Lake Worth is stained water. If it's moderately clear, I'll probably still end up throwing this one while I've got it tied on. Uh, a walk-in, because I intend on throwing it in thick cover, I may switch it up to a pop-in if I need to, or even another top water. I've got a few other options, but starting off with the black filthy frog. Next up, we got a nice natural chatterbait with a saucy swimmer on the back. This one's got a little red in it, just to stand out in that murky water, which is what I anticipate. This is on that seven foot medium heavy fast action go to rod. I got a metanium DC and not enough fluorocarbon to make a bomb cast, but we got enough to get the job done tomorrow in some shallow water. These are in no particular order, but if we find some rock off some points, we're going to be throwing probably the shaky head. I, haven't, I don't throw it much, but I'm going to break it out tomorrow if need be, right? If they're not hitting the moving baits and I got to slow it down a little bit, you know, the summer heat, it's going to be up into a feels like temperature of over 100 tomorrow. Probably going to be casting this thing out, giving it a whirl. I've got a watermelon red flake on right now. If it's terrible, visibility I also grab some black and blue so I've got these larger size slim shakes 
Uh, summertime, they'll eat the big worms, and so that's what we've got. This is on a go-to rod, Scorpion DC, and uh, that is that. Here we go with a reaction rod. This is a softer tip, great for the treble hook baits, and we've got a deep diving crank on here. Now, I may switch it out. I grabbed a couple recons. The shad color is probably going to be more of a go-to than this guy right here. This is that Carl Shiver crank. And then we've got this on the 200 size Corrado. And uh, these are Gomexis handles, get a lot of questions on those, so. Next up, this is one of our older Powell setups. I put it on a Guggen muscle rod, but the thing is, I don't really care for tomorrow. I've already got it rigged up with double weight pegs and a Snell knot, so I've got my flipping setup right here. This is a seven foot six medium heavy fast action rod right here, and I've got a new punch tied on with a half ounce weight, double weight pegs, flipping hook, and a Scorpion DC. This is now the current generation right here with 50 pound braid for some heavy cover work. The green, pumpkin, purple color, which I've had luck with in just about any clarity. Next, we've got the beefy swim bait set up. This is a red one to start. This is by 316. And uh, yeah, five inch swim bait, red to stand out again in that murky water. Tranks 200 uh, or 201 because it's that left hander. These are DRT handles. And this is the St. Croix 711 uh, like swim bait and A rig rod. We've had this for the longer time for our big swim baits, which this really is not, but uh, I definitely want a beefy hook set around the thick Texas cover, and so that's this setup here for the swim baits. Lastly, we've got the good old Texas rig. This is a quarter ounce weight, unpegged for that slower, more natural fall, and a sprayed lettuce color, so I've had luck with this thing, and everything from clear to completely stained water. Confidence in that color is through the roof. Uh, we've caught giants on the sprayed lettuce, so this is on a muscle rod as well, 50 pound braid, but I've got a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader that I've tied with a double uni knot on this thing, so SLX MGL, and uh, that is the setup here to round things out. Now, I've got a few quick grab baits that I'm going to have on the ready just in case I need to make a switch on the fly. So I've got a poppin' frog. Should I feel like they just need a little bit more vibration to come out of the woodworks? You'll notice the nose is a little bit different than just those standard walking frogs. So they don't work through cover quite as good. You can still walk them, uh, but they cause a little bit more disturbance on the surface and they can draw those fish up out of the cover where the walking, they, they got to key in on it just a little bit more. We got a spinner bait in case it's cloudy and windy and I may even go with a shad color, but of course it's got a lot of flash from the blades. And so spinner bait is ready in the wings. Got a little dark sleeper, not necessarily my confidence color, but Devin is always out fishing me on these things, and so this has uh, got a little red in there, and I'm thinking, hey, I might just tie this thing on tomorrow, give it a couple casts, and if I catch something on it, great. If not, great. Shallow diving crank, the banger. This is what caught me a lot on the Lake Waco tournament, and I actually lost my biggest one as well. Just fishing the riprap. I might actually untie that deep diver and go with this to start in the shallows and then switch to the deep diver as the day progresses. We're just going to have to see how deep everything is, what's the clarity, but I've got it ready to go. Lastly, for some shallow water fishing, I've got a clickbait ready to go with shad and chartreuse. Really stands out in that murky water, and I also grabbed a handful of different colors. One with a little fire engine red and some black and blue. So in case they're keying on a certain color and I take advantage of the switch, I've got these ready and waiting in the wings. I seem to have missed the little baby plopper too. We had a lot of luck with this on Lake Nakanish on that recent bass boat video. We went down there to East Texas, so I might tie this guy on if it is really murky. This smaller size resembles a lot of the bait fish I've been seeing in the lakes lately, and it's got a different noise than those big ploppers, so I feel very confident in getting bites on this guy right here if they're not hitting the frog, so we got that as well. That really covers it. I got the paddle. Uh, we're rocking the autopilot tomorrow, which is the trolling motor kayak with spot locks, so we shouldn't have too much of an issue, but always when launching, uh, loading up and all that stuff it's good to have the paddle sometimes you find yourself in thick grass and you've got to lift the motor and just paddle your way through it not to mention shallow water spots if like there's access to a, a nice little nook and cranny area that you got to get into some shallow water you just lift the motor up and use the paddle for a moment and then of course we've got the pliers got to be able to unhook the fish if they choke the bait and this is going to get the job done so we got a new set of Guggen pliers over there at the HQ ready to stash on the kayaks for these tournaments so far the feedback has been phenomenal on the tournament viz but if y'all are digging it please let me know down in the comments section be sure to subscribe we've got a lot more bass boat content coming now that we've got it back bank fishing yak fishing you name it so we'll see y'all tomorrow at lines in 533 just got launched spot locked right off the reach just literally right off the ramp we're going to kind of fish this down a little ways with the frog first thing here at six o'clock lines in and then i think we're going to work our way out to some rocky points the opposite direction here in a little bit so i believe i'm working east at the moment then i'm gonna head west uh, so that's the plan. So I'm finding out that these lights back here, they really give you an edge because you can launch half an hour earlier and really the benefit is being able to get to the spot and kind of claim it, right? You know, there's a couple other anglers that are kind of doing the same thing. They're working farther down the bank and imagine if they're the person who catches that big fish of the morning because they got there first. 
that could put them in the money and you're talking about over a thousand bucks for first place payouts all the way down to i think seventh or eighth place i'll pop it up on screen right here so it could come in handy man and that's why uh, that extra half an hour really counts launching before first light it's now 5 42 we still got about 20 minutes till first cast and i'm seeing fish blow up here outside of the reeds and i'm hearing them back in the reeds so I'm probably gonna try and tuck that frog in back in there to get things started but uh, we got another 18 minutes until we can make that first cast 6 a.m let's go mega wakes from the past boats Done. come on oh boy he's got us locked up he might have come off let's see Not a good way to start. Did he come off or is he on here still? God, dumb. Whew. Man, it could have been. <laughs> Y'all got two or three already or you just got the single? Mm. Golly. What was that? 14 minutes in. Built right beside me has already got two. I think they're both whipping the frogs through here. And uh, so it's looking good, looking good. There we go. Got us one. Well, oh, get up in here. There we go, finally, about time. All right, first one of the tourney, y'all, 619. Let's go. Let's see what we've got here. That's an 18 incher right there. 18 inch or solid way to start the morning. Let's go. There he is. Come on, that one's even bigger, I think. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Oh, sheesh. No, 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 no. Uh 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 uh. uh. That's not gonna do. That's not good. Uh uh. Quit playing. Not till we hit the measuring board. All right, fish number two. Don't you do it, don't you do it. All right, I think that was like 16 and a quarter. Come on. Just switched to flipping that nuke on the straight braid. This is that uh, half ounce weight. Had to go exploring. Hmm. No hits on the chatterbait, no hits on the worm, no hits on the nuke. Going back to the frog for a moment. I don't think I got much time left with it based on how they're acting, but we might be able to still pull one up if we hit some fresh water, I'm getting way back in there. Morning. Few. I've been putting in the time not doing well, so hopefully we can put something together. That's three. Let's go. I don't know if I was recording on this pro, the GoPro, but that was 15 and three quarters, I think. All right, y'all. So here's the stats 56 anglers, 22 fish logged. I have logged three of those fish, but they haven't gotten approved uh, yet. So we're going to see what happens. So far in first place is 39 inches and 32 inches, but with what we have submitted, but with what we've submitted, we're at 50.25 inches. So I bet you some other people got to get some approved. Let's start fishing, y'all. At 7:10, we got to get on the ball and try and take home the dub today. Let's go. Maybe cash a paycheck. You're kidding. Found some more reeds, y'all. Still in the shade. Uh, they've got a harder edge, so I'm not really trying to work the frog way back in them. Instead, I'm just going to flip it with the nuke here for a moment. I was thinking about the bandito bug, but I got some fluorocarbon line on there, and uh, this one I can just work so fast with that half ounce weight. All right, we might go traveling a little ways. No freaking way. First place out of 56, let's go. Come on, what if we had that fourth one? 
Oof. We're on our way to another spot, man. Don't know if you can see it, but we're currently on our way to one of the lake's main points. It's got some, some good rock. I'm sure it's been getting fished this morning, but that's where we're headed. Morning. <laughs> Y'all finding them this morning? Really? Nice, nice, nice. Man, 56 of us out here. 56. Yes, sir. <laughs> kind of nuts, right? I did. I, I ran into another dude, uh, a couple guys, and they said they were doing a little tournament on the bass boat as well. I don't know if it's 56 boats, though. No. <laughs> I was blown away. That's a lot of entrance. All right, hey, y'all have fun. Thank you. While it's, it's still calm winds and we're on our way to this main point, we're going to have to be strategic because we've got this right now, okay? But it can fade so fast. Uh, from 20th place down, uh, nobody has caught anything, uh, or at least they're logged and not approved yet. So 36 anglers have not caught one fish, okay? Um, that's been me basically every other tournament. So we just got very fortunate with that frog bite. Can't lie about that. Um, wishing we would have that fourth. That would put us in a tremendous lead, but that's okay. We're gonna find some more. We're gonna break out the shaky head, the crankbaits over here on this rock and have ourselves a good time. It is so early. We've got nowhere to go but down from here, unfortunately. So we gotta really pick up the pace. I might like chuck and wind this uh, chatterbait along the rock here as I'm working my way to the spot. 3.30 alarm went off. I did not even wanna get up. I will tell you that much right now. Hour drive. It'd be nice to be going 70 right now across the lake like homie right here, but we're going, how fast are we going? We're going 3.7 miles an hour across the place. Anyways, we're on the way to the next spot. Just super hyped. Had to get on here and do a little update for y'all. It is 7.45 in the morning. getting on him this morning i almost had four one came off so I'm, I'm up to four fish now just got lucky crankbait right here though get in on it at this point i figured everyone was going to be hitting this you know the depth out here where, where you're at by chance all right thank you man i gotta buy some goodies for this little boat i uh, just checking in y'all eight o'clock update with that little 13 inch here we're now in the lead by two and a half inches just barely man 38 fish logged so far but matt pulled through with 60 inches on four fish so uh, it is a tight race at the moment we got three fish back here with 50 inches so cody's got himself a big one somewhere i think we might even be able to look yeah he's got himself almost a 20 incher so that's gonna do well if he uh, gets the five which i'm sure he's gonna and then so uh what do we got in fourth place he's looking at a 16 and a quarter 16 and a 15 uh in fifth place with 40 inches they got a 16 a 12.75 and a 12 barely made the cutoff with the 12 man that's been me every tournament i'm telling you uh chris drop shotty angling i believe i ran into him at the bank uh, early this morning he's got two fish right now one's a 17.25 good fish and a 15 incher that's the top six places and um so there you go. There's some payouts and whatnot anyways. I'm going to keep cranking. I just want to do that little 8 o'clock update. We got to find one more and then see if we can size up on that 13 incher though for sure if we're talking about winning this thing throughout the whole day. Breeze just picked up a little bit. I like that. Find those bass feeding up on the shad. And that is the color we're throwing, y'all. I just wanted to give you a quick strategy session. So uh, I'm going with this smaller profile just because I know it resembles a lot of the small bait in here and I can probably get more numbers. But if I catch one more fish cranking this rock right here, big or small, then I'm going to go ahead and tie on the recon and try and size up. A little bit larger profile. Dives just a hair deeper, if I'm not mistaken. 8 to 12 feet. I think this one's actually a, an 8 to 12 footer or something like that as well. Might be able to bank some more rock. 
rock. If we can get a little bit deeper, it's always good to hit that decline on the way down from these rocky points. Uh, you, you do always want to be hitting bottom with those crankbaits. That is the that is the goal, bouncing off of it with that square bill. So if you got a shallow diver, you're really only working the first few feet of water, and then you're just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. But with these crankbaits, you want that depth. You want to be banging that rock all the way down, and so that's why we're using the deeper divers today. We're not fishing the shallow stuff. But yes, we're going to upsize as soon as we catch one more fish off this rock, and if we don't, I'm probably going to leave this guy on and just crank him around throughout the day, knowing that that smaller size should get more bites. Oh, got one, got one, got one. Tighten the drag a little bit. Might be better. He hit it hard, but that doesn't, that doesn't always mean anything. Oh my goodness, come on. Ah, it's a drum. Man, can you just come off of here? Oh gosh. Uh, I really thought that was like two and a half pounds or something. Yeah, I know. You did it to yourself. Fish? I don't think so. Wow, I got hit though. Oh. Thought I had that one. It's called a rock. Got it there. With these square bills, if you get caught, oftentimes you just don't yank on it. Just give it the slack and they'll float up to the surface. They'll kind of back their way out of uh, either like maybe a stump or rock. So just something to keep in mind, but doesn't always work, so. Mm -hmm. Before sunrise, yeah, but not anymore. <laughs> what's your Weston, what's yours? Cody. Oh no, I know who you are, I got you, yeah. Uh, you're sitting pretty good. You got a big one then. Good luck. On nine o'clock update, I threw around the shaky head for a while. I was cranking for a while. I uh, debated on throwing a jig, but I did not. And uh, I ended up switching over the shaky head to black and blue. This clarity calls for it, but no fish on the point aside from that first one. So we are moving on and we're off at turtle speed. Okay, hold up. This is looking scrumptious. I think it's time for a little pit stop. I've got my trusty depth checker right here. It's called a half ounce weight, so let's see how long it takes this thing to fall. Should take no time at all, and that is correct. You see any bass swimming around here? Are you straight out? I'm just gonna hit this shade and then I'm out of here. A lot of people out fishing today, man. Off every point I'm seeing. That's what inflation does. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Oh man, tell me about it. I didn't even want to drive out here. <laughs> Good luck, y'all. This is my first time fishing here, but I got four out of five so far. That's what I need, so. Hey, I appreciate it, thank you. I'm not gonna be spending a ton of time here. Feeling like that's pretty much pointless. Are you headed back in there or just coming this way? Ah, I got you. Having any luck over here? <laughs> one main point, caught one on the crank. Got lucky with a frog bite early in some reeds, but that was it. I was thinking about heading to the river. Have you been that far? Good cover though, or maybe not? No, I've never even fished here. Well, let me contemplate. I'm gonna keep working down a little bit, but uh, I may decide to just come back. We'll see. Well, good luck to you, man. Rock, shade, huh. Got him, come on, let's go. Midday plopping, that's gonna be like a 13, I think. Yes. All right, about to hit y'all with an update after this one. All right, y'all, we've got the five fish. Let's go. Quick break in the shade as it approaches 100 degrees out here. Woo! 
Uh, I'm throwing that little whopper plopper because it resembles all the minnows I'm stirring up and all this bait fish I'm seeing as I rip the crank through here. So I'm thinking, okay, you know, those bass are keying in on those fish, jumping at the surface, thinking maybe another bass is feeding on them. Let me go in and get some myself. So I want that noise right here. It's a windblown point. There's rock. I know there's fish hanging out or cruising through, and I got to get their attention somehow. And not a lot of these other baits are going to do it unless they've got some noise. So that is exactly why I tossed that guy right there. Same color as the bait fish I'm seeing had to do it. We just got our bag. It is 10 30 in the morning. That puts us back up into third place. The leaderboard just refreshed after that catch was logged and we're only sitting in third by one inch. So we could lose this thing anytime. Plus there's probably a handful of folks that have got four fish at the moment that are still fishing as I'm talking to y'all. So we're going to have to make this fast. Also first place is only four inches ahead of us and they've obviously got some bigger fish. So it's gonna be a little bit tougher for them to cut out their smallest one for something any bigger, but if we get a 17 inch or bigger, that's gonna put us back into the lead at this current moment in time, 10.30. I'm assuming this bite's only gonna get tougher and tougher as the day progresses. So we're still sitting in a good spot, but it's gonna be tough if we wanna hang on to this thing, y'all. Hundreds of dollars are up for grabs. This would be our first ever place in a tournament. I really came out here with the goal of finishing in the top half. Just because the first two tournaments I ever did were, they were pretty tough. The first one was close to 50 anglers. My battery died halfway through, so I got both batteries on deck today, just in case. I brought the second one right back there. I gotta get me a 100 amp hour battery. That first one, it was on Amon G. Carter, so windy, it just could not last, as well as the fact that it was tough fishing. I think only, ooh, four or five people maybe got a bag. A lot of folks got skunked that day, and so it was tough. Second one was on Lake Waco, and I really should have done well there, but my biggest fish came off. Y'all saw that video already. And then there's today. I see one area I want to hit over here just a little further in these main points have been good to us today and then I think I'm gonna work closer to where we started see if I can just slow play those reeds again uh, flipping or just uh, frogging and that seemed to be where the big fish were hanging out and if not I'm gonna venture my way uh, towards the dam side of things I saw some good points with some riprap that's uh, what's on the agenda for the rest of the day y'all we still got hours so let's just try and size up from here pretty good man how about you two so far that, that'd be the same for me, except I got a few on the frog earlier, so I just got my fifth, man. I got lucky with it today, I think, so. Five, yes, sir. One on the plopper, one on the crank over there off the rocks, three in the reeds on the frogs, so, you know. Just got one right here. It's a little guy, though. Nothing crazy. He's the smallest one, so. Hey, appreciate it. Good luck to you, man. GoPro's getting warm. 97 feels like 105. Woo, boy. Air quality alert. Dang. 103 it's probably going to be feels like 115 or something then if it feels like 107 right now hmm you got this Ooh. Ooh. seeing some bait the bass should be back here There we go. That's a good one. Come on. Biggest of the day for me. Come on. Yes. 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 That's gonna upsize us, y'all. Come on. In the shallows. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. Yes. This one might be the longest of the day. No way. That is what we need. I don't know if it's gonna get us. I haven't looked at the leaderboard in a little bit, but it cannot hurt. That's bigger than 13. Yes. No, I'm gonna lose this freaking fish. Stop it. Yo, chill. <laughs> Come on, baby. Ugh. Flip over and do the dance. Uh, whenever you're ready though. Don't, no rush. Like, I know you're just trying to go crazy as I measure you, but then all of a sudden you want to act like you ain't gonna, that's what I thought. Go ahead. See ya. 17 and a quarter. I'm freaking stoked. Into second place, but I think we're sitting just behind first now. We're gonna see here in a minute. Nuke punch, man. Midday pulling through. That's a deal. That drag did not like me either. As we re-rig, here's the key. Half ounce weight, you could even go heavier. I mean, the key is just kind of getting into the thick stuff and this helps you get down to the bottom where those bass are at. Flipping hook, right? Uh, let's call this a 
three ought maybe. I mean, it's kind of small, perfect for the job though. Uh, two weight pegs, that way your weight stays pegged to the bait and the hook. It's nice and tight, that way you can work through this thick stuff. And I literally, I mean, I've gotten snagged a handful of times, but it just works through it, man. And uh, one of the keys here, you start it off like a Texas rig, right? When you're throwing your flipping setups, you pull that 180, you get it up past that shelf right there. Hopefully y'all can see this. Boom, past the shelf. And then I don't work it like a Texas rig. You know how you poke all the way through the bait and then you kind of put the hook back in there? No, nah, that's not good enough for flipping the thick cover. You really need, and this is where the new punch stands out. It's got that, it's a thicker body. And so it works perfect. This is literally the punching bait, the flipping bait. So uh, I'm gonna see exactly where I need to kind of penetrate the plastic. Looks like about right here. And I'm just going to go on up and through there not even pushing all the way through the plastic. So you are completely weedless. Now I'm gonna bring that weight back down and I'm gonna bring those pegs back down, back in business. Green, pumpkin, purple, one of my favorite colors, y'all. I got everything linked in the description. There's even a discount code and it's one of the biggest ways y'all can help support the channel too. I love doing these kayak tournaments, but of course they're getting expensive. Maybe today we'll pull through and earn a couple bucks, but otherwise it's uh, with all this inflation and gas prices just to get out here, let me tell you what, entry fees, I would love y'all's support. Anytime you use those links below, it does wonders for me. And so I really appreciate you guys for that. I'm gonna go ahead and keep flipping. Let's try and bring this one home, y'all. I'm gonna update y'all on the scoreboard here in just a second. I just wanna let that catch get approved to see where we stand but I think things are looking pretty good and you got to get right up on the reeds by the way that one was a little shy you need to be up in up in the stuff if you want to get those bites and uh, this is like right where I caught that last one I realized I thought I was over there but it was not I got a little disoriented so this might be all we do until the three o'clock buzzer what time is it 12 28 we got two and a half hours, y'all. That sun is high and you just want to target the shade pockets. Some of those fish are out deep and you can crank them. I didn't have as much luck and the ones I caught were smaller. So all the big ones have been in the reeds today, whether it was the frog or the nuke. And so this is where I'm dedicating the rest of my day. I can pretty much guarantee it. So just a couple more pointers if you're not familiar with this technique. For me, ideally I'd be using one of my left-handed setups. That way I don't have to switch hands, but it is what it is. I'm kind of ambidextrous with it. You see some's left, some's right. But for this, I would love to just be able to flip and then set the hook if I need to flip. It makes it just a little bit speedier, but I just had that set up on the right hander. I could take the time to switch it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> you serious? And you want to get as far back into the stuff as you can. Like I say, if there's a little pocket back there, just hit it. You got 50, 65, 80 pound braid, whatever you're working, you need the heaviest stuff money can buy, really. Uh, you want the reassurance that if one bites, you're going to be able to pull it out of the thick stuff. So look, I'm just flipping way back in here into the shade. Leave your spool open until it hits the bottom, but do not give yourself any slack. You need to feel those bites, and as soon as you feel that tap, you need to set the hook. They feel that heavy weight, they're gonna let that thing go, y'all. So you gotta keep that line tight, be ready for the bite, and just go straight for it. I mean, whack them. As far as safety goes, whenever you set the hook, ideally you set it to the side, okay? Whether you're left or right-handed. You don't wanna set it up necessarily, because if you miss the fish, or it wasn't a bite, or whatever, it will smack you in the face. That might just be lights out. So be very careful with these heavy weights. They are not a joke. You're using a heavy broomstick rod. You should be using something like a, you know, nothing, nothing short of like seven, five, seven, six, you know, heavy, fast action, extra fast action, really. And so that's, that's just a couple pointers for this technique right here. Hopefully y'all can hear with the wind. I'm just targeting every little bit of shade I see. Let's try and catch us another big one, y'all. It's officially starting to get warm, y'all. 115, an hour 45 left. Let's refresh the scoreboard. It's getting hot, man. I'm about to tell you all the weather too. 99 fish logged. We're in second place by one and a half inches and we have a 13 incher that we could get rid of. Every bite in the reeds has been solid. If we get one more bite in the next 90 minutes, that could do it, man. But we're there's some folks close to us right on our tail, so we really gotta hustle. Whew, just loaded up on the ice water. Let me check the weather right now. It says 101 feels like 110. I mean, it's hot. No time to waste, man. 90 minutes left, just over actually. Let's keep flipping these reeds. There's a lot here. You could torque the, you work this slow, slowly, man, inch by inch. Ah, we talked about the technique a lot, man. Last thing is just tighten that drag, crank it. This is not finesse. This is all power. And if your drag ain't cranked, you can say goodbye to that fish before you even set the hook. So we're gonna keep working this thing. There's some wind on the other side picking up now. Could get good, y'all. Could get good. There's even more reeds over there. I see another yak working them. So this is probably our best bet. Let's try and close out strong.
Don't do that to me. I think I got one. Oh my gosh. I think I got one. This could be the game winner. This could be the game winner. Come on. Did that fish come off? Gosh, dang it. Gosh, dang it. No. <sighs> that hurts. All right, y'all, pardon the lighting. I know it's hit or miss over here. The time is almost four o'clock. About all of the anglers are back here under the, uh, under the bridge the majority of us launched at. What is this, the 88 bridge? What bridge is this? The awards are taking place here under the 820 bridge, and we're just waiting on the last few folks to get back over here. I want to show y'all some of these setups, man. It's crazy. Everyone's got a different layout. Everyone's got a, you know, different electronics set up. They've got trailers. Check this out, man. The setups are just super sick. PDL autopilot. They've got it all. Tons of Hobies out here. Pro Angler 12. Yeah, man, so just crazy setups all the way around. It makes you want to modify your kayak. I can promise you that. We definitely got to get some electronics on here, some graphs. I couldn't tell water temperature. I couldn't tell depth. I'm over here sticking the rods off the side of the kayak all day, looking like a fool. And somehow we managed to do okay. We got lucky. And so what they did is they took down the leaderboard for the last hour, so nobody really knows what place they've got yet. So we're waiting on the host, and we're going to go through the awards and see exactly who got what. Santos Zapata. Hey. 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 All right, coming in fourth place, winning $200 with a limit of 81.5 inches, it's Nick Lowry. Coming in third place, winning the bronze medal today, and also $300 to go along with it, with a limit of 82.5 inches, Mr. Casey Kemp. Second place, taking on $600 with a limit of 82.75 inches, Michael Cates. Woo! Just added to the collection. Y'all, by the way, the winner, stick around so I can introduce you. First place today with a limit of 85 inches, winning $1,260 in the Covenant North Texas trophy and a $50 gift card to Mariner Sales, Mr. Ross Pinkerton. Good job, Ross. All right, y'all. So we had some folks either holding out on submissions or they just crushed it in the last 90 minutes and absolutely killed it either way congratulations to them we finished in sixth place out of 56 anglers in sixth place um winning 55 dollars with a limit of 80 inches is weston smith i'm thrilled with the results y'all i can't thank y'all enough for sticking around for the tournament footage though it's been a blast and uh, we can't wait to fish some more of these things. Let me know if you enjoy these down in the comments and we'll catch you back at the house. All right, y'all, we had to get some rest. We were exhausted after that lack of sleep and getting baked in the sunshine. But what a result, y'all. Sixth place out of 56. We can't say it enough. I mean, that was a great time. I was really just hoping to come in the top half of anglers after my first two kayak tournaments I'd ever fished. So this was the third, and we're looking forward to doing some more, but there's not too many left this year uh, on the kayak trails and Facebook groups I'm finding down here in Texas. So, you know, if we got to travel out of state or something for one, maybe it would be worth it. We'd love to try and find more and do a lot of kayak fishing videos tournaments specifically in the future for y'all because the feedback has been fantastic but of course we've got a lot of regular bass fishing content headed your way banks bass boat john boat you name it so stick around for that we've also been doing some real reviews that have gotten great feedback we've got some new metaniums one left hander for me right hander for her that we're going to be showcasing soon so be on the lookout until then y'all we'll catch you on the next episodes thank you so much for sticking around till the end peace